let's talk about the characteristics of Rider syndrome. Now, there's a classic triad. Triad is uh, signs and symptoms of a of three. So the triad of Rider syndrome is conjunctivitis, arthritis, and non-gonococcal urethritis. And three to ten percent of Rider's uh, patients progress to ankylosing spondylitis, which we talked about in the last video. So the mnemonic is can't see, can't pee, can't dance with me. So if the patient can't see and if they're having problems with urination and they can't walk or dance, if you will, then you, they have probably writers. And so the epidemiology of writer syndrome is this a male dominant uh, disease versus females. And the organisms that are respons responsible for this is chlamydia, Campylobacter, Urashina, Shigella, and Salmonella, and it's more common in white individuals, and it's associated also with HIV. So what are some clinical manifestations of Rider syndrome is you have arthritis, and so the arthritis appears two to four weeks after the initial infectious agents, usually genital urinary or gastrointestinal routes of infection. It's asymmetric. So this is kind of interesting. We talked about um, symmetric bilateral both sides sacroiliitis are kind of the common features of seronegative spondyloarthropathies, but this one's asymmetrical. So one side's affected more than the other. And oligoarticular, uh, average of four joints or less, oligo is few, lower limb involvement is greater than the upper extremity, so a lower extremity involvement is greater than upper extremity, is more common in the knees, ankles, small joints of the feet, hence can't dance, yeah, the rare, it's rare in the hip, and if you do get it in the upper extremity, it's the wrist, elbows, and small joints of the hand. And you, some patients present with dacolitis or sausage digits. And so I put over here a picture so you can kind of see the normal. Uh, in this individual, there's there's their normal digits here, and then you have dacolitis, which is looks like a big sausage, sausage uh, sausage digits, dacolitis. You have swollen, tender digits with a dusk-like blue discoloration, kind of like a Renaud's phenomenon. You have pain in the range of motion, so when the patient moves or clenches their fist or open it, it hurts. You have enthesopathies in the Achilles tendon, and so here I put a picture of an enthesopathy slide, and so what happens is when you have a tendon, Okay, so this could be a tendon, a ligament, fascia attachments, any kind of those types of tissues, and they insert into bones. So tendons attach muscles to bones and ligaments attach bone to bone. And so when they kind of go in, they have to kind of embed and they're like a tree. You know, these are the roots of the tree, if you will. But the instead of the ground, it's the bone. So this kind of gets in here and embeds itself so this mu so this muscle uh, or this tendon or this ligament doesn't rip out of the bone. So what happens is the you get inflammation in this area and then you see uh the erosion, you see inflammation and erosion of these of these uh you know these t insertions where this tendon inserts into this bone and this is called enthesopathy. So you kind of see that in the Achilles tendon, specifically in Rider syndrome. And you got, you got low back pain and sacroiliitis. So the ocular or the eye components are inflammation of the conjunctiva, ureitis, uveitis, episcleritis, and corneal ulceration. So you can have all kinds of problems with your eyes. And the genitourinary part is you have inflammation of the urethra. You have edema, meatal erythema. You have balanta circinata, which is the small painless ulcers that, that are located on the glands of the penis. And you have urethitis. So here under the skin and nails, um, this picture right here is caroderma balanoragica. And so you have hypertrophic skin lesions on the palms and soles of your feet. You can just kind of look at that. So if you ever see see that, you might be knowing what's going on. And then you have writer's nails. 
So you have thickened and opacified crumbling non-pitting nails. So sometimes you get like little holes in it, pitting nails. This one is non-pitting. So usually you don't get pitting, but you get opacification. You can kind of see here how this is these nails are becoming a little bit more white, opacified, so and then they start getting thick and then they start crumbling, just kind of breaking off and crumbling. The heart um, involvement is conduction defects. You have general weight loss, fever. You also have amyloidosis. We'll talk about that in a, in a few videos, what amyloidosis is. So some of the lab findings. You have the synovial fluid changes, which are, which are big, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. You have an increased R, ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR. You have uh, RF factor that will come back negative, and you have an ANA that will come back negative. The patient has usually anemic, a normal chromic, normal acidic anemia, and positive for the HLA B27, as in most of the seronegative spondyloarthropathies. So, what does Ryder syndrome synovial fluid look like? It's turbid. Turbid means increased cell count. It could be white blood cells, usually white blood cells, but it could be other kind of uh, white blood cells. It's poorly viscous, uh, poorly poor viscosity, so it's a lot of a lot of liquid, rather than like oil, um, you know, vegetable oil, cooking oil, or motor oil, that kind of viscous. It's more just like water. Uh, the white blood cell count, five to fifty thousand PMN. And then it's increased protein. There's incre increased protein in the area uh, due to uh, destruction of the joint. And you have normal glucose. So here are some synovial fluids. And this is normal. And you can see how you can kind of still see the, the letters behind the fluid. This is turbid, which means it's kind of opaque or uh, cloudy, if you will. And because there's more cells in there, there's proteins in there. And it's less viscous than this. And this is blood. Blood, which is called hemarthrosis. Blood in the joint. So if you aspirate, take it, or remove some synovial fluid to take a look at it and it's bloody, then you got hemarthrosis, which can be a whole slew of, of problems. And uh, the last are the radiographic findings. And so... There's lover's heel, which is erosions and periosteal changes at the insertion of the plantar fascia and Achilles tendon. So lover's heel is an example of here where you can kind of, so here's the Achilles tendon, or sorry, the plantar fascia on the plantar surface of your foot. And you can kind of see how there's changes here when, with the connection of the calcaneus. This is the calcaneal bone. And then the Achilles tendon comes down here. And you can kind of see little changes here. So both of these is what is called lover's heel. I don't know why, but that's just what it's called. Ischial tuberosities and greater trochanter involvement, asymmetrical sacroiliitis, and then syn syndesmophytes. And what a syndesmophyte is, is here is in your low back, and here are your vertebra. And then right here is the intervertebral disc or the IVD and what happens is you have ligaments so when you bend backwards if you bend backwards your spine doesn't break in half because there's ligaments here and there's muscle muscles out here but these ligaments right here it's called the ALL anterior longitudinal ligament that runs all the way up your whole spine. It runs along the anterior, or the front side of your spine. What happens is that starts ossifying, or that starts becoming bone-like, and you can see these opacities here in these white arrow arrows. How that ALL is starting to become ossified and starting to become turning to bone. So that's what's called syndesmophytes under radiographic findings. And then the last one is pencil in a cup deformity. And it's in the hands and the feet, but it's more common in psoriatic arthritis. So psoriatic arthritis, I think we'll talk about that next. But that is um, 
It's more common in psoriatic arthritis, but you can also see it in Reiter syndrome. And what it is, this is how the fingertips, the, the normal bones kind of articulate with each other. Well, a pencil in a cup is just like if you had a cup and you had a bunch of pencils sitting in here, it's the, the bone, the proximal bone kind of comes to more of a point, and then the distal bone or the joint farthest away kind of makes this cup shape here so you can kind of see that it's a pencil in a cup deformity and you could look at you can google that and find pictures of it online they're really hard there's not a lot of great pictures there but that's pencil in the cup deformity okay we'll see you in the next video